Some of you who listen to my teaching videos may wonder when I don't put out a video for a while. And what I want to share with you is that I only do these videos as Holy Spirit leads me and directs me. And so yesterday the Lord instructed me to do this and release this video on the Samuel anointing. So I want to begin um, with an encounter that I had in Israel when I was in t on tour in the year 2007. We visited um, the, the birthplace and the burial place of Samuel the prophet. And as we um, entered into the, the building, um, there were these beautiful arches which had shown that that particular building at one time was either um, a synagogue or possibly a church. And the guide um, pointed uh, to the, the doors off to the right that was actually connected to this, this church and said that that was um, also a mosque. So it, it was all together. And as we uh, went up these um, narrow set of, uh, of uh, steps, it led up to the rooftop where you could you had a, the, a view of Israel for miles and miles. It was very beautiful. But this particular day, it was very windy. It was 50 to 60 mile an hour winds, and it was kicking up a lot of dust and dirt, and it was getting in my eyes. And so I very quietly just walked down the steps to the to the um, the synagogue part of the the uh, the building, and I was there all by myself as the rest of the group remained on the roof. And as I looked up and I just saw how beautiful the arches were, were I thought, oh, I bet the acoustics here are really wonderful. So I began to sing and praise and worship the Lord, and I began to sing um, Alleluia. And um, so I continued to sing, and then when I was done, the double doors off to the right, uh, there was like these three Muslim guys, they opened a door and just kind of stared at me. And at, at that point I thought, okay, it's, it's time for me to rejoin the group. Um, and that was the experience that I had there. Um, and the Lord just most recently spoke these words to me. Now regarding um, what had happened uh, 10 years ago, he said, child, the Muslims set up their mosque in sacred places to kill the anointing that I have established. He said, search and see where they have strategically built mosque. The enemy knows where I have placed my anointing. So I got online and I began to Google uh, the locations of mosque in, um, in Israel. And of course, we all know that there is a mosque on the Temple Mount, which is a very sacred place, and I'm sure has a powerful anointing in that place. And, and of course, the, the mosque in Ramah, um, where uh, uh, Samuel was a prophet, and there is a prophetic um, anointing um, in Ramah. There's also a mosque in Bethel. Um, that's the place where Jacob encountered Yahweh and he built an altar there. Um, this is also the place where Jacob saw the angels ascending and descending on the ladder uh, to heaven. So we know that, uh, that Bethel is a, a portal or an entrance uh, to heaven. There's also a mosque in Jericho, and that's the place where the Israelites first crossed into the Promised Land, and uh, we all know the story where they circled around and marched around uh, Jericho for seven days, and on the seventh day, they shouted and the walls of Jericho uh, fell to the ground, and they um, captured and destroyed and defeated Jericho. And so as they marched around Jericho, they released a breaker anointing into the ground that's still there today. There's a, a mosque on Mount Carmel where Elijah called down the, uh, the fire from Yahweh um, and caused the people to turn back to the Lord. There's a mosque in Bethlehem, which we know that is the birthplace of Christ. There's a mosque in Nazareth, which is the hometown um, of Yahushua. And I'm sure there are more mosques, but these are the ones that I had researched um, uh, as the Lord had instructed me. And then the Lord also revealed this to me about that encounter that I had in Israel in 2007. He said, child, um, when you praised me at Samuel's birthplace, you released power in the spiritual realm for the Samuel anointing to be resurrected. Ancient doors that had been closed for many years were opened. He said, you received the Samuel anointing, but it has taken you 10 years to step into this Samuel anointing. 
So I said, Lord, what is the Samuel anointing? And this is what the Lord said. He said, Samuel was the final judge of Israel and he was my prophet. I chose him before he was conceived. Samuel was dedicated to me before he was conceived and he was set apart all his life to serve me and to connect people to me. Samuel was my mouthpiece. He spoke and gave instructions as I gave them to him. He said, the Samuel anointing has discernment and clearly hears from me instructions and counsel. A judge rightly discerns my answers to difficult situations and then instructs my people. He said, being a judge has nothing to do with passing judgment. It has everything to do with godly wisdom and given, uh, given uh, counsel to those who are being led astray. He said, Samuel was my prophet and all his words that he spoke that came from me never failed. He was anointed as prophet and imparted his wisdom and anointing to other prophets. He taught the prophets and he had a school for the prophets and he had the spirit of prophecy. He said, Samuel was also a priest unto me. He offered sacrifices, built altars, and rightly discerned when it was necessary to appease me for the wrongs of the people. Samuel was a leader in my army. I gave him permission to anoint kings and establish the protocol for worship and sacrifice. He said, Samuel waited upon me to receive his instructions from me. He spent many, many hours in the mountains of Ephraim in my presence and waiting upon my words and my instructions. He returned to Rama after he went on his circuit of judging my people so he could retreat to the mountains to be with me. And he continued and he said, Child, you have received the Samuel anointing and I will take you back to Rama when you return to Israel. So everything that the Lord spoke to me in this message, you can, you, it can be confirmed um, if you go to the, book of, the first book of Samuel and just read. I also looked up Samuel's name uh, to see what it means because in the Hebrew culture, a person's name revealed who they were in the eyes of the Lord. So Samuel means heard by God, okay? And his, his name is derived from two Hebrew names, uh, two Hebrew words. Uh, the first word is Shema, which means to hear intelligently with the implication of attention and obedience, to diligently discern and give ear to so you can make a proclamation. And, it, and the, the other part of his name is El, E-L, which means strength, mighty, the almighty God. So Samuel's name is defined exactly how the Lord described him to me in that message. So if you'll turn with me to uh, 1, Cham 1 Samuel chapter 7, verses 5 to 10, I want to read this. And Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray to the Lord for you. So they gathered together at Mizpah, drew water, poured it out before the Lord, and they fasted that day and said there, We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel at Mizpah. Now when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel had gathered together at Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard of it, they were afraid of the Philistines. So the children of Israel said to Samuel, Do not cease to cry out to the Lord our God for us, that he may save us from the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. Then Samuel cried out to the Lord for Israel, and the Lord answered him. Now as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to paddle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a loud thunder upon the Philistines that day, and so confused them that they were overcome before Israel. 
So now after I read that script, that scripture, I was so um, moved by that scripture. And so I wrote this prayer in my journal, this long prayer, but I only re- want to read to you a p- portion of that prayer. I said, Lord, I believe you are going to thunder with a loud thunder and give us victory over the enemy. And we are going to regain what was taken from us. You are going to give us lands, vehicles, bank accounts, possessions. You are going to restore family members and bring family members uh, to Christ. And you are going to restore relationships that have been torn apart. So 12 days later, after I had written that prayer, um, I was at a Memorial Day um, picnic with my family. And there was a lightning strike that struck so near to where we were. And the clap of thunder was that followed immediately was so loud that we all jumped. Um, so the next day, as I was in prayer, I realized that that loud clap of thunder was what I had prayed for 12 days earlier. And I was praising the Lord for doing exactly what I had asked for in that prayer. And this is what the Lord said to me. He said, my child, now you are seeing the power of your declarations. So we need to understand that when we write out prayers and when we declare things through the power of Holy Spirit, that they will indeed occur because that is the power that he has given us through our declarations. So something happened that day in the spiritual realm as a result of the Lord's thunder and he routed the enemy and he gave us victory. So the Lord heard my prayer just like he heard Samuel's prayer and the Lord answered with thunder. I don't know about you, but I, I just think that is just so amazing. So while I was still in the book of Samuel, I received another message from the Lord and this is what he said. He said, let me fill you with your, with my peace and I want to renew your mind. And at that moment, I saw this vision of an angel and the angel was holding like a small handheld harp. Um, and the Lord said this to me. He said, focus on the angel's hands playing the harp. He said the same way that David played the harp to soothe Saul is what this angel is now doing. He said, it is the harp of peace. He said, I am giving you the harp of peace because you carry the gospel of peace. So in 1 Samuel, the prophets used instruments and uh, to prophesy. And one of those instruments was the harp. And we see that in 1 Samuel 10, 5. After that, you shall come to the hill of God where the Philistine garrison is. And it will happen when you come there to the city that you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with a stringed instrument, a tambourine, a flute, and a harp before them, and they will be prophesying. So we see that um, with the Samuel anointing that we also can use instruments to prophesy as part of that anointing. So I want to summarize uh, this Samuel anointing because I believe that some of you who are listening to this video have been given this Samuel anointing or even by listening to this video, you may have received this anointing. So number one, separation. It says that Samuel was separated unto the Lord at birth or even before birth to the Lord. So if you have the Samuel anointing, it's because you've been set apart, you've been called, you've been chosen by the Lord. Number two, you are a prophet of the Lord and you operate in the gift of prophecy because you have the spirit of prophecy. You are the Lord's mouthpiece. You are also a seer and you see things in the spiritual realm and you have prophetic dreams and visions. Number three, you are a priest unto the Lord and you offer sacrifices of praise and prayers to the Lord on a regular basis. You spend many hours in the presence of the Lord and you hear the voice of the Lord and you hear his instructions. Number four, you are a connector, meaning that you have the anointing to connect people to their creator and to their savior, Yahushua. You hear directly from the Lord and you report what you hear and what you see. Number five, 
you are a discerner, meaning that you have the gift of discernment and you clearly hear instructions and counsel from the Lord. When you call upon the name of the Lord, he answers your prayer. In Psalm 99, 6, it says, And Samuel was among those who called upon his name. They called upon the Lord and he answered him. This is the Samuel anointing. Number six, you are a warrior. You are on the front line of battle in the Lord's army, and you are not afraid to battle against the enemy and the demonic realm. Number seven, you are a judge in that you have godly wisdom and counsel, which you give to those who are being led astray. So for those of you who are listening and you sense that you have received this Samuel anointing, then you should pray to the Lord and ask him to confirm it.